All right, let's bring in our panel. We've got uh, Daniel Rubino. He's the executive editor at Windows Central. And Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome and thanks for uh, being here today. Uh, the topic we're going to talk about on Semiconductor, releasing earnings this morning. Uh, we saw an EPS and a revenue beat. And I'll go to you first, Melissa. Uh, what was your take on this report? Well, it, it was a nice gap up this morning. The stock is rallying. It's rallying with the overall market. It's been in an uptrend now for quite some time. This sector has done very, very good in the last year. So, I mean, it looks good that it could possibly, possibly make brand new all-time highs once again, which it did in the last 30 days. Not as big of a rally as I'd like to see, but this is one symbol that kind of has little baby moves. It's not like, like for example, something like NVIDIA that can have these monster, monster gap ups on good earnings. So it was good this morning, but again, not at new highs yet. Right. And uh, if you take a look at this, Daniel, on this report, you know, one of the biggest segments that they're moving into is in the automotive sector, which makes up about a third of their revenue at this point. And that's only expected to grow as the EV market grows. Uh, what's your uh, outlook here for uh, on semi uh, in this type of environment where demand is there and inventories are low? Yeah, so they're positioned very well for this market, and I'll tell you why. It's because when it comes to these advanced driving auto systems, uh, you know, that we see, of course, in Tesla, uh, they're positioned because they have LiDAR, radar, they also do the cameras. So they do the trifecta of what's going to be some of the most important technologies. Now, Tesla says they don't need LiDAR. But I can tell you other companies will be using it as a redundancy system. It's also tested and well known. So they do all three of those as well as the other electronics for electric vehicles. To put this in perspective, traditional non-electric vehicles used around $40 of some electronic components. That's estimated to go to $500 in tomorrow's electric vehicles. And on is right there to uh, in a position to provide all that equipment. So the market is both growing, but also in, in each individual car, it's also growing in terms of the, the bottom line cost. So they're positioned there very well. We know that's a growth market, but they're also in medical. They're also in 5G. They're also in smartphones. So they're in all those kind of markets that are growth. Now, 5G has been a very slow burner, didn't do as well in 2020 as we anticipated. But we do know that in terms of infrastructure, it's still going to continue to grow. We'll see that in 21, 22 going forward. Again, their position there as well. And of course, medical is always a big industry where they do a lot of custom sensors for a lot of medical equipment. Yeah, and Melissa, I, I know you uh, look at the technicals when uh, when you're doing your research on your stocks. And as far as price action and maybe some of the flows that you're seeing in a name like On Semiconductor, do you see this being maybe a short-term trade or do you look at this more of a long-term investment? I think it has some ways to go because, again, if the overall sector continues to stay strong, which it's been very, very bullish in the last 12 months, unlike some things, like some certain sectors you saw a, a sell-off uh, during the year of 2020 when COVID hit. This was one sector where you really did not see that kind of crash. So if you're looking for stability, if you're looking for the future, if you're looking for long-term growth, I think you see that in this sector. And again, this is one of the, ON is one of the lower priced ones in this sector. So if someone wanted to just outright buy the stock or do a swing trade in it, it would cost a lot less than buying something, like I said, like NVIDIA. NVIDIA now has earnings at the end of February. That's one to watch that it could fly, fly over $600 a share. And if it does, then ON could make brand new all-time highs with NVIDIA and again with the sector. But that's that's about a couple, three weeks away from now. So I would watch those earnings. If you wanted to go long today, you could, but you're going to probably have to wait it out until you see what NVIDIA does at the end of February. Yeah, and if you look at uh, NVIDIA, and they've got their hands in everything that's growth, and uh, and I think the gaming's actually helping that stock a little bit more than uh, maybe some other names in that space. But uh, if you take a look at this uh, this name, Daniel, and you look at maybe competitors or another name within the semi space, what else uh, piques your interest here? Yeah, so this is a really competitive industry, obviously. Uh, you know, you have Qualcomm, you have Texas Instruments, Infinon, uh, Power Chip Technology, uh, Broadcom, Semtech. Like, so there's a lot of good companies here. But as noted earlier, they're priced way higher. They also have their hands in more AI, which I think is also an important field. You know, NVIDIA is doing very well there, too. Uh, so it is a competitive market. But then again, you know, when you're talking 
about on one, I think the value is it's low, right? It's an easy buy-in, as just mentioned. Um, they also have a lot of IP, right? They do a lot of their own proprietary technology, which is shown to be important. So I do see them as a, a growth, but uh, all of these uh, same market chips are going to do very well, I think, in the next five to 10 years. There's just no doubt about it as they're all positioned well. Yeah. Hey, Melissa, just real quick. We've got uh, Google Alphabet and Amazon earnings tomorrow morning. Which one do you like better here going into those results or tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, they're both at night. I kind of wish that they would be spread out, but it never works out that way. But they're both absolutely 100 percent going to affect the market today. We have a rally in the market. Last week, we had a sell-off in the market. Let's just say best case scenario, they go together, whatever that would happen to be. Let's say they both gap up and have good earnings and rock it on the earnings. We could see the market then make another brand new all-time high, which would be Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. That would seem impossible given the economic situation with COVID in 2021, but we've seen the market continue higher. Let's just say one of them bombs and they fall and one of them rallies, it's going to drive the other one down. So even one negative reaction price wise whether it's amazon or google and i don't know which one it's going to be i don't have any inside information i'm not in any plays in this until you see what happens in the earnings but if one of them is bad and one of them is good it's going to drag the other one down do you understand what i'm saying so it definitely will affect the other uh, symbol and it definitely will affect the overall market the market even though we're rallying today feels really heavy to me it just feels heavy to me like there's an underlying uncertainty of what's happening with this stimulus people are waiting for this two thousand dollar check it's not happening congress is focusing on impeachment instead of the stimulus so i think that there's more selling to come in this overall market and you could see that this week if one of those earnings is bad and worst case scenario if they're both bad yeah, I kind of agree with you there. All right, I'd like to thank Daniel Rubino, executive editor at Windows Central, and Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh.